there is one measure by which we, we will be judged by the people who come after, and that's the health of the land base. That's the only thing that matters. The only thing. They're not going to care for nice people. They will care that they have water to drink, and that they have food to eat, and that they have, and they're not being poisoned, and that the planet hasn't gone to runaway global warming. That is what matters. But until people understand that, you can argue with them all you want, and you won't get anywhere. They really have to have to see that and accept that before you can have any sensible conversation about what to do about that. Um, and so long as people remain oblivious to this fact, you can argue about other things all you want. But uh, till, they, till they see that we really are uh, facing a calamity, not for the planet, because life on the planet will go on just fine without us. Uh, but we are in danger of making ourselves extinct. Um, it's very hard to imagine what a long-term future uh, is going to be like for, for architecture, what the, the long-term plans. We can look to 2,000 years ago, but the game is completely different. All the rules have changed. The resources are different. Uh, it's, it's impossible to know how we're going to be uh, living on this planet, if at all, uh, in 100 years, 200 years, or 300 years. The industrial experience was a story with a beginning, a middle, and an end. It was a narrative. It wasn't just something that is established and then goes on forever. That implies that we're going to need to know how to do engineering on a small scale, on a local scale, on a doable scale, on a using materials that are common and still available and, and technologies that are not too high. You know, that's why for me, you know, give me the space that I need. It's not, it's not a lot. Make that space efficient, make that space healthy. Uh, make, it, make it in a way that when it's over, I feel good about what's gone because of what I did. And make it in a way that when I'm gone, it itself is just gonna melt back into the earth and it's not gonna be a big eyesore. It's not gonna be a gash out of the forest. My house is not gonna be a gash out of the forest. I've been in many Cobb buildings and they're wonderful. Cobb is, is a real favorite of mine because it's so, you can be so playful with it. You know, you can make these shapes, uh, organic shapes and so on. It's, it's uh, um, you know, it's, you, you can build hobbit houses and you let your imagination run wild. You know, you're not confined to these, you know, flat walls that end in square corners, uh, which is really so boring. The square box is, a, is, in fact, one of the worst structures you could ever invent. Um, you notice that nature never has anything square. There's a reason for that. Because probably if there was anything square ever in the five billion years history of nature, it would last maybe a minute. <laughs> because uh, the, the square box is probably, from my research, the most inefficient, ineffective, shape in the, in the universe. We need to reinvent these ideas around sheltering ourselves such that it allows us to enhance community because in the energy scarce future, the real social security will be being on good terms with your neighbors. So we need to figure out how, how our living arrangement can support that, can support us being on good terms with our neighbors, being friends, being there, showing up for other people who live near us. Is it possible to offer people a different cultural paradigm? That says, what's really important to us is our relationships with the people around us, our relationship with the place that we live, our relationship with the stuff in our lives that we eat, that we clothe ourselves with, that we build with. By focusing on those relationships, 
I think there's a positive ripple effect that we need out into the rest of the world.